See, that ain't talk about. That's what say the earth opened up her mouth. We got books from all over the world now. Some of these books that we expose, because I have like archaeology tapes from archaeology information from uh, a little before 1992. Of all kind of books. We have a book it's about this thing called Amazing Facts that the elders put together. A lot of different books. And those books have the books that's been researched in by We the Brothers in the Truth to correlate with what the Bible says and the pages in these different books, all these different books to show that we are the Israelites and showing us living on this earth and you know doing what we do but the Wachita is still a hidden secret not to everyone because they know that's why I say and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood or the lies which the dragon cast out of his mouth, right? So, then you know that the dragon, the serpent, the devil, Esau, the Edomites, um, who I leave out, the beast, they all read, and they all under the same vibration of telling us lies and teaching us lies. You know? And we fall for it until this day. You don't have no chimney, but you say Santa Claus coming down the chimney and you're going to lay, lay out some cookies or some milk for who? That's no different than they had them idols. They had that Buddha idol and then they put cookies and milk and they put cookies and, and incense and, and lettuce and tomatoes and, and uh, chocos and whatever you want to name in front of this idol and it just be there. Then you got to take it away, put some more there. They ain't ate nothing. They ain't doing nothing. But that's what's the difference? Then you look at Santa, S-A-N-T-A, -A, you move the letters on, you got Satan calls, but you don't see it. But this is what we're dealing with. You know, that's why I say, again, and the dragon was wroth with the woman. The dragon was wroth with the Israelites. And went to make war with the remnant, that's the one third of her seed. One third of the 12 tribes of Israel. Because the two thirds, they already got them. They're the children of the devil. You don't believe me? I, I already said it. I said it once before. Let me prove it to you. Go to first, first John. First John. Third chapter. And the 10th verse. First John 3 and 10. And this, the children of the Most High are manifest and the children of the devil. See? Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of the Most High. Remember we read in Wisdom Solomon 5 and 6, 7? So they're going to follow the same way. Follow the same way. They write with them. They join unto them. And they wicked butt. In this the children of the Most High are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, you don't want to follow the law, such commandments of the Most High, according to Deuteronomy 6 and 25, is not of the Most High. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So you don't love your brother, you're not of the Most High. You are the children of the devil. So you don't like me? You got a problem with me? You the children of the devil. Because I love my people. Most High said in Romans 9, 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved. You see? I'm on your case, but I want you to repent. Come back to these laws, says commandments. If you were Israelite, hmm. but it's the message that he heard from the beginning that ye should love one another. So it's talking about us. They ain't talking about nobody else but us, the children of the Most High and the children of the devil. So don't get it twisted. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Revelation 12:17. The remnant of her seed is the one-third that's working to be righteous in the eyes of the Most High. But there's no use talking about us because they say, which keep the commandments of the Most High. Do Christianity keep the commandments? 
or any other religion that you know keep the commandments of the Most High? Name them. I already said that once. Name them. I'm looking for you to name them. So we can start going down the line and say they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing this, they're doing that. And we can find out. Even the Holy Convocations. Which one is keeping all the Holy Convocations? The New Moon Feasts and so forth. Which one's doing all these things? For starters, name them. And have the testimony of Amashiach Kavashiach, the true testimony of Amashiach Kavashiach, not no watered down uh, belief that he's a so-called white man. You know, because like y'all say the white man wrote the Bible because y'all lost. You don't know. This is our book. Second Ezra's 2 and 26. We got to have some hope, y'all. Second Ezra's 2, 26. Have faith in the most high. Here it is. It say, as for the servants, talking to the so-called white man, whom I have given thee. Servants are the 12 tribes of Israel. We the servants that he most has given you, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. Hear that? He's gonna require his servants from among their number. Be not weary, just hope, y'all. But when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. Others shall weep and be sorrowful. But thou shalt be merry and have abundance. Does that sound good? Sound good to me. Read it again. It says, be not weary. But when the day of trouble and heaven is coming, others shall weep and be sorrowful. But thou shalt be merry and have abundance. It's going to be for those that's really going to lock into this truth. The heathen shall envy thee. Hear that? The heathen shall envy us. Most I will if we hear. But they shall be able to do nothing against thee. Said the Most High. Do what the Most High said. Do you hear the word of the Most High? He said, My hands shall cover thee so that thy children shall not, be, not see hell. He says, hands going to cover us so, it's, so the children don't see hell. <laughs> he said, be joyful, O thou mother, with thy children. Be happy, mothers, with your children. For I will deliver thee, said the Most High. Remember that children that sleep. Remember the ones that sleep. We read about in um, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth and show mercy unto them. For I am merciful, said the Most High Almighty. And the Mashiach, the Most High Almighty. Listen, the Most High said in Isaiah 14 and 1, for the Most High will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined unto them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob and they shall take them and bring them to their place for servants and handmaids mm, mm, mm. thus say the Mosiah pure face so embrace thy children until I come and show mercy unto them, for my wells run over, and my grace shall not fail. Get something that we don't deserve. That's grace. Shall not fail, he said. Remember the grace and mercy is to his saints, the children of Israel. I, Ezra, received the charge of the Most High upon the Mount Oreb, that I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught. They don't want to hear you. Like a lot of y'all probably set me at naught. They set a lot of brothers at naught. Don't want to hear us. They don't hear nothing we got to say. They set him at naught. You ain't nothing. Get out of here. And despise the commandment of the Most High. That's our people. They set him at naught. Meaning he's nothing. You ain't nothing. Not mean nothing. And didn't want to hear the commandment of the Most High. And... You understand this? Ezra was given 
204 books. All you scholars out there that got 66 books, don't even have an apocrypha, but y'all teaching people. Get out of here, man. That's 124 more books than you have with 80 books. Look. Verse 34. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen. He calling us heathens. O ye heathen. Remember he said they said not. They won't hear nothing about the commandment of Moses. I say, O you heathen. You just like the heathens. That hear and understand. Look for your shepherd. Look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest. That's why I say, we're going to get that rest when we're in the kingdom. And there are going to be servants and handmaids of these other nations. For he is nigh at hand. He is near at hand. And shall come in the end of the world. And we know he said in 2 Ezra 6 and 9, what did he say? For Esau is the end of the world. So the Edomites will have to be ruling the end of the world, which they are, super part of the earth. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. See? So he coming, he shall come in the end of the world. Mashiach Yavashai coming to judge and make war. Revelation 19 11. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Everlasting light. Everlasting light. Illuminating. Because we're keeping the law, says the commandments of the Most High. He says it's going to shine forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world. See, flee the darkness of this world. That's hip talk. You know, we say darkness, but it's, talk, it's hip talk for because a shadow is what? Is it light? Is it you ever see a white shadow? No, you see a dark shadow. Black shadow, right? Your shadow is black. I'm looking at it now. I'm trying to catch it on the side of my there it is right there. It's black. You see? Look at your shadow. Make it be white. It's black. That's darkness. That's hip talk. The shadow of the world, darkness of the world. So he told Esau in in, in Isaiah 47 and 5, he said, be silent. Shut up and get thee in the darkness. When he got in the darkness in Isaiah 62, what did he do? He told him to put the people in what? Gross darkness, gross ignorance, not knowing. Hear what it said? It says, flee the shadow of this world. That's why he told us in Revelation 18 and 4, come out of her, my people. Say, flee the shadow of this world. You know, you are, you join up to this world, you're going to die. He's going to put you to death. Receive the joyfulness of your glory of the kingdom that's promised to us. We got next forever and ever and ever. I testify my Savior openly. Talk about a Mashiach Yahushua. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad. Giving thanks unto him that has called you to the heavenly kingdom. Man. Listen, arise up and stand. Come, Yasharela, and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of Hamashiach Yahushai, which are departed from the shadow of the world. So if you ain't ready to depart from the ignorance, the, the darkness of this world, this ain't talking about you. This is talking about we that have departed from the shadow of the world, the darkness of this world, the ignorance and the not knowing this truth of this world, and have received glorious garments of the Most High. What are those glorious garments? Get up, uh, uh, Revelation 19 and verse 8. Glorious garments of the Most High of Mashiach. That was shy. What, is, what does it say? Revelation 19 and 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, okay? Clean and white linen, that is white, should be arrayed in 
clean and white linen. For the fine linen, the fine white linen, is the righteousness of saints. See? In the righteousness, we know in Deuteronomy 6 and 25 represents the keeping the commandments of the Most High. Right? So, in the saints are the 12 tribes of Israel. Psalms 148, 14. We are people near unto the Most High. The children of Israel. So, keep in mind, it says they're going to be decked out with white, clean linen, right? So let's keep on reading in the Apocrypha. Second Ezra 2 and verse 39 says, which are departed from the shadow of the world, the ignorance of this world, the darkness of this world, the shadow of this world, and have received glorious garments of the Most High, while Mashiach Yahweh was shy, right? And remove them garments of what? White, clean linen. Listen. Take thy number, O Zion, which represents the twelve tribes of Israel, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. Whoa. Now you tell me that ain't powerful. Tell me that ain't powerful. Shut up those that are clothed, how? And what? In white. which have fulfilled the law of the Most High. Tell me they ain't powerful. Tell me they ain't powerful. Yeah, can't. Have fulfilled the law of the Most High. The righteousness of the saints that will be clothed in clean white linen. You see what it said? Take thy number, O Zion, O twelve tribes of Israel, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. The righteousness of the saints that are, which have fulfilled the law of the Most High. Can't get no clear to that. Get no clear to that. Verse 41. The number of thy children, whom thou longest for, is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Most High, that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hollow, may be sanctified, and cleaned up. Look at Psalms 91 and 1. Psalm 91 and 1. Special people that is talking about Psalm ninety one and one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Say, I will say of the Most High. He is my refuge. So you're going to be under the shadow of the Most High. Secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Most High and not the shadow of this world. You see? That's powerful. And I even recognize that, you know, in the spirit of spirit bringing it forth. Not the shadow of this world, which is darkness, but the shadow of the Most High. The shadow of Mashiach Yahweh Shai which will bring us to the light. I will say of the Most High, He is my refuge and my fortress. My power in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. This is what we got to be delivered from because these plagues are on this earth right now and these things are going to happen. He shall cover thee with His feathers like a chicken covers her, her little babies with her feathers and under her His wings shall all trust his truth, which is, we got to sing it together, Psalms 119, 142, that righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and that law is the truth. So his laws shall be thy shield, our protection, and buckler. Keeping these laws will be our protection. 
Because we're doing what he said do. His rules and regulations. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Let you know at night it's going to be some terror by night. Nor the arrow or the missiles that fly by day. Missile will be flying in the day. Terror at night and missile will be flying in the day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. You see? All these diseases that we're dealing with. And they're going to be putting on the, on the uh, earth. Splicing genes and so forth. Getting your genes and your DNA to be able to determine how they're going to bring forth things that will destroy you. Now for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. See, walking in darkness. What well, most I told them to get there in darkness. I mean, it can't be no clearer than this. Say, they made for the day of evil. So, the pestilence that walketh in darkness, his period of time, to be ruling, nor for the destruction that wastes at noon. They let you at noon, day destruction coming, y'all. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Uh-oh. See, a thousand gonna fall at our side. And ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. That's what we want to be at. We're all a thousand at one side and ten thousand at thy right hand. And it's not going to come near us. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Hear that? With our eyes, he said, we're going to see the reward of the wicked. Because you can bring them down. Because thou hast made the most high, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Hanging out with the most high. Living with the most high. Because habitation is where you live. You're living with the Most High, like he said. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Be right under him. May the Most High our dwelling place. Listen. Neat, verse 10. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. So these plagues that he put on this earth, he said, ain't no plague going to come near your house. That's why it's important to be able to be in a spirit of humility with the Most High and knowing what it takes to please Him. That's what's important to me. Anything else is null and void. If you, whatever you're doing, it displeased the Most High, <laughs> this ain't talking to you. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. In all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. <laughs> right? So, let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter. Once again, this one of my shackles shy. He was 30 years old when the ministry starts. When you read uh, Numbers, the um, fourth chapter in the law. He started at 30 years old. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights to see what the devil did. He kept coming at him, tempting him and so forth, this way and that way. And every time he came at him, he went to the law to, to dismantle everything he was saying. But he can't go to the law. He contrary to the law. Go to uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, ninth, the ninth verse. It's the devil. That he is the devil. And he, the devil, brought him, Amashakelbashai, to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, right? And said unto him, If thou be the son of the most high, cast thyself down from him. So he set him up on a high pinnacle and said, Cast yourself down and defy gravity. For it is written, this is what he's quoting. See if it sounds familiar. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Right? So we just read that in Psalms, the 91st chapter, the 11th and 12th verse, right? We just read that. So that's where he went. He didn't go. Salute what Amashai was shy said to him. And Amashai was saying, answering, said unto him, It is said. Where, where does it say that? It is said, by all you scholars out there, where does it say that? In Paul's writings, Peter's writing, James' writing, the book of Revelation. Where does it say? In the Gospels? Listen to what he said. It is said. Anytime he said, it is said, 
or it has been said, or have you not heard, or it is written. It's talking about the Old Testament. But he's talking about the law here. He said, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the most high thy power, right? So let's go to Deuteronomy 6.16. See what he quoted from. That's all he had was the law and the prophets. He didn't have nothing else to go by. I'm talking about when he was here in the flesh. So he quoting from every time, and I did a lesson on that, you know, um, that a monster was shy, rebuked the devil with the law, by the law. So now, Deuteronomy 6 and 16. You shall not tempt the Most High your power. That's what he quoted from. So you should not tempt the Most High your power. See? That's what he quoted. Second Ezra 3. And uh, 27. Second Ezra 3 and 27. And so thou gavest thy city over into the hands of thine enemies. As was talking, talking to the Most High. So like you. 